Game two. Let's go. So we see the Lee Sin J span. Aphelios, Renekton, and Azir for the side of DK. That Azir was never getting through after that first game. Never, never, never. It was just way too strong. Like, absolutely no chance whatsoever they get Azir again. So. Let's see what happens within this draft now. So, first pick, Rises Ban. So, they're probably going to go with something like maybe Viego even. Or they could Trundle and then flex it. But I don't think that's too great as a B1. They could just get the Camille again. Oh, there we go. Yeah, they could just get the Camille again. Um, and, you know, just play for top. Now, there's also this threat that they could potentially take Trundle as well. Which, again, is going to result in a similar early game to what happened in that last one. So, again, yep, yeah, the Viego goes over. Azir is banned away now, so they can't go Azir. So maybe we just see something like an Ash come out here. Just an ADC that they can kind of throw under the bus a little bit. And it also denies it from Showmaker. They might also go with Ziggs since Ziggs is open right now. And they might just look to play um, the heavy poke game. T1 again. They like to focus their top side though. So the Nas going to come out into the Camille. Oh, are they going to go with Gwen again? No way, surely. If they go with Gwen here and DK choose Trundle, then they're kind of doomed. But Gwen Viego. So this was a patch where they became way too strong. Like, way too strong. This is where they kind of start de like dominating competitive play. So, from the side of DK right now, I mean, Ash Braum is available right now. And they could just look to run back the same kind of comps. Um... Maybe they do pick the Ash here, to be honest. Or they do pick the Ziggs. We did mention that he's available in this draft. Uh, maybe they go with like a big engager like Leona here on Nautilus. Just to get this uh, Ziggs a really good bot lane. So, there we see the Leona come out. This also avoids it getting banned away in the second ban rotation. But, uh, from the side of T1, they're kind of a little safe now. They're in the, in the, in the clear a little bit. Because now they just need to... And ban away Trundle in the second rotation, and that's really good for them. So here we might even see something like a Syndra come out. She's not banned right now. She's very, very powerful. TF as well is not banned, but we do see the LeBlanc come in for Faker, which, again, this is one of his signature champions. So they banned away Azir. He's just gone to the LeBlanc. It's kind of hard to ban this guy out entirely, but they did get rid of that Rise, which is really good to see. Like... It's nice to see that they're actually adapting in this uh, phase. So they need to ban away the Trundle here as a priority because they're really strong jung jungler. Probably Trundle and Diana in terms of T1 bans right now because then that's going to also deny the Diana Yasuo combo. He, he did actually ban the Zin, which, you know, it, it's okay. I mean, Zin is a very, very strong jungler. Um, I think Viego was actually stronger on this patch. Um, actually, no, like Zin's kind of busted, to be honest. But the thing is, they're not really that long range, so Zin wouldn't have been as effective here right now unless they're thinking of taking a long range ADC like Varus or Ash, which are two very, very good picks in both comps here, actually. So the Ezreal gets banned away because obviously they're playing for topside. The TF gets banned too, um, just because they really don't want to give Showmaker the ability to influence those side lanes at all. That's kind of what he's really, really good at. So now we'll probably see uh, maybe an Ash ban from the side of DK. Callista, okay, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, then go Callista because, like, if they were to go Callista, then as soon as Callista gets level 6, then the support is kind of safe, allowing them to play for top side. They do take the Trundle away, though. Nice. So that's going into support. That is a blind pick. I uh, no, sorry. Leona's already showing. So Trundle's actually a very, very good pick here um, because it counters Leona and it also stops um, Canyon getting it and having that kind of Camille Trundle 2v2 situation. Corky. So if... oh, the... He's locked in Cassidy. Oh my god. This is going to be amazing. Zero wins, zero picks. It's never been picked in LCK. And he decides to whip it out in the finals. Ooh, nice Vayne pick though. So the, the kind of good thing about Vayne is that she can kind of 
Once she gets six, she can run up on uh, Ziggs quite easily uh, due to the fact the amount of movement speed that she gets, and she can also either Leona away when she goes to use her E2. So um, she's going to go with the cleanse either way, but I mean, they do have um, quite a beefy frontline in terms of Leona and Olaf, and Castling's going to be quite beefy. So. Vayne's just going to be there to just have a massive amount of damage later on into the game. Now, this does mean that T1's draft is focusing more towards this bottom side of the map because they're going to make sure that this Vayne and Trundle manage to get ahead. Um, but they do also have the Eagle and the Blanc, which is an amazing 2v2. Now, the thing with them picking Cassidy is Cassidy is going to be forced under his tower for quite a while. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what runes he goes with. I mean, maybe he goes with the Fleet. He's probably not going to go with Grasp. I think that's kind of outdated now, even though Resolve Tree is very, very good. Um, but he's probably just going to go with uh, Fleet, probably. But we could see, um, especially since Fleet does give him um, quite a big advantage because he is a melee champion through and through. If you go somewhere like Kale, Fleet ends up kind of dropping off mid-game because you end up being ranged. So, I mean, that's an option. Um, also, I mean, he could... Uh, I mean, maybe we see a Conqueror... Who knows? Or maybe even just something like Phase Rush for the extra kind of mobility. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe he just goes all out and goes Electrocute and just tries to kill LeBlanc at level 6. But I doubt that'll happen. I mean, that's a very, very fun way to play casting because you have a massive amount of burst when you do get to level 6. But it's really not too worth. So we see a little intro here. I'm not really too interested in this. Thank you very much, Riot Games. So here we are in. So casting, he did go with the fleet. I mean, I mean that's what we did think from the start. It is a it is a good rune on casting. Um, I I don't mind it too much. It's got ultimate hunter and um, uh, taste of blood in his secondaries. Um, in terms of the rest of the map, nothing really crazy in terms of runes. We have double Dima in bot lane just because you know they're both going to be looking for that push. We do see Ziggs with the transcendence and gathering storm though. You love to see it. I love 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 when people know the power of. Um, gathering storm obviously we do see faker go into source 3 4 transcendence and mana flow which is quite important on leblanc because it's like your main damaging ability on leblanc is kind of gated within um your uh, mana because it's like you need to also use your w to push the wave and also do damage now we can see here that teddy is being massively aggressive in this bot lane and um, purely because as soon as Ziggs throws this bomb, they know that they can actually engage on him because they don't really have any damage and Leona really needs to wait until level 2 before she can kind of all in. Ghost has never lost on uh, Ziggs though, which is kind of interesting to see, but Canyon first pick Olaf, Cassian first pick Showmaker. First pick for the Vayne as well actually, so Teddy feeling really, really confident that he can carry on this pick in... And this game since this game is so so important so here we can see faker's got such a big slow push built up in the mid lane that now what he's going to do is probably just push it in and maybe try and rotate and i mean if the viego moved as well they could potentially walk into the jungle and kill the olaf but i don't think that's going to happen to be honest faker just like to get this crashed as quick as he can and um, so that he can you know either be a little bit aggressive or potentially move he does get the raptors ward so he knows that olaf isn't towards his bottom side and that's why you can see him hovering towards kind of the bottom side of this lane just so that he doesn't really get caught by the Olaf and um, again he is trying to get some pressure on Showmaker considering this matchup is literally a case of if you do not kill him early then he is going to kill you so we can see Faker just massive pressure Showmaker you know trying his best to just farm everything he can doing okay I mean he is almost uh, a full wave behind though already so that is quite uh, risky but the thing is, Faker needs to get this wave to uh, bounce back. So now, the way that Faker had this wave in that situation, now this wave will actually come back into him if he doesn't push it, which I doubt is going to happen because Faker really likes just pushing waves in and just punishing on minions, which is kind of Faker's identity. Faker, like, Faker became known being so good by basically forcing every single person he laned against to, to take damage on every single farm so he layers the minions perfectly and this alone was enough to let faker just completely dominate um in the early days of league like there was there was absolutely no comparison to faker back in the day just because he was just so ahead of his time and even now he's still kind of one of the one of the great mid laners but 
We do see a TP come in here from um, from the Camille, but kind of just getting run down. He is going to die here just because they have so much kind of agency and they have so much damage. Unfortunately, Olaf does die there for the one for one, which that is a little bit unfortunate actually, but so that actually does more harm to the lane than good, to be completely honest, because uh, Kana could actually get there in time before Camille pushes that out. So Trundle dying there was actually very, very bad. It does allow Camille to catch up on um, minions, but overall it's just terrible for the side of DK, considering like they are usually way more dominant than this. It's very interesting to see. So, Viego is up by about 12 CS on uh, Damn, the last time this champion was played was by Showmaker into T1 in 2020. So, very interesting to see. He was playing into a Silas then. So, again, Kassadin is kind of an anti-mage champion. Unfortunately, you need to get ahead. Uh, sorry, you need to, like, not fall behind. I mean, it's in Faker needs to get ahead in this matchup. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very risky later on. But what was that stat there? That was huge. Win rate overall in LCK, I think, 83.3% uh, win rate on this champion. Like... How crazy is this? I remember he went like 15 games in like at Worlds, I think, without losing one on LeBlanc, something like that. Like, it's how he actually got his uh, title of the Unkillable Demon King was because of his LeBlanc. We'll probably see that in this game, to be honest. His ability to kind of uh, get in and out of these fights is, you know, it's going to become very, very clear. So. So, Vayne, to be honest, is farming fairly well. I mean, she's only 3 CS down on the Ziggs, so... That's, uh... That's something for sure. Teddy is actually just dragging this into the brush. Purely so that he can get a slow push going. So now he's looking to slow push into bot. So that they can potentially get a really, really big wave. Trap this bot lane in and then potentially rotate on the dragon. Now, the reason why this dragon is actually so important is because... As I've said multiple times, it is a cloud, which means because cloud has spawned now, that means that there will be um, no option for it to be a cloud soul. So it's going to be a good soul no matter what. So this is kind of why Teddy's building up this slow push in bot now. Vega's just going to clear away his, um, his camps, and then they're going to potentially go and get vision control and potentially look to see if they can... Um, Converge on this dragon now. Unfortunately, they did lose a scuttle crab, but Viego doesn't really want to go to the dragon, it seems. I mean, like I previously said as well, it's very risky going for a dragon this early into the game because um, both junglers. Wait, hold on. Canyon, because he died actually, has still got two smite charges available. This is terrible by Warner. He's not tracking the jungle smite. So the problem is here, Wanna isn't actually tracking the jungle smites of the Olaf, so he doesn't, like, it's very clear that Olaf doesn't have smite, and Olaf's actually sat on two stacks as well, oh my god. Oh, it's so bad, it's so bad. It's, oh god, it's terrible. He was literally on two smite charges still, which means... That he's fucked up, and I'm partly probably because he died. But on top of that, it also means that Wanna just completely gave away this objective for free. How are they ever going to contest it when Wanna's smite is 900 and um, and Canyon's is only 450? Like it just doesn't work. Like he's got double the smite value. Oh, it's so sad to see. Like it's so sad to see. And the thing is, you can tell if they finish their smite raid as well. You just have to see the items. They would have seen that. Um, 
he still had it in his inventory, so... So, Khan just instantly ults Kana. Kana trying to put out some damage with his ultimate does just completely kill him. Unfortunately, though, Olaf is one of those champions that really runs down um, whoever he goes after. So, he does manage to get Gwen and there's nothing she can really do with a W. So, Wanner is actually just trimming this wave down so that it'll freeze for the Kana. So, uh, for the Gwen, should I say. Teddy just running down Ghost, though. Teddy, let's go. What an insane play by Teddy. Like, I mean, it wasn't insane, but it was nice that he had the balls to do that on in, in a finals, you know? So now we can see that this wave is in a really, really good position for the Gwen. Um, she doesn't even need to TP back now because it's basically frozen right here for her. So Trundle, uh, Olaf is going to kind of invest his time into crashing this wave, but he's just waiting here to see what will happen. The kind of patience out of him, but... At the same time, like, I mean, it's patient that he's waiting, but he's losing so much. Now, we see Cassidy coming up. Now, this is one of the things that we see a lot. As soon as top lane starts conceding pressure, they just go for the three man. And Kana, unfortunately, cannot outplay that. Showmaker gets out. Oh, he dies. Okay, one for one. They will completely murk the turrets, though, uh, the platings. So. That's bad, but we do see that Viego does have this Rift Herald, so the fact that there's two of them pushing that is making those resistances go up, and what we're going to see now is they're going to potentially look to try and get the entire tower here. Okay, so now we see the entire tower. Now, obviously, when it comes to Rift Herald mechanics, if you take or tower mechanics, even if you're auto attack, if you're trying to take the plates and you take a plate and there's four people, five people around the tower, the resistance that the tower gets goes up based around the amount of people that are around it. Now, Herald does true damage though on his charge, so what you can do is you get it down three plates and then you just drop Herald and it guarantees to do 2000 damage, which is two entire plates instead of a thousand gold each so it's it's a very good strat that you can use in order to use um your herald at the correct time and by doing that you can uh, do a lot so here we actually see so it kind of gets a massive amount it gets a really good queue off on um the camille but we see the teddy here you know gets slowed by the by the trundle pillar and now he has no w to escape so teddy just runs him down and again the amount of the amount of balls on this guy to do this on a on a finals game is really really important especially considering he hadn't played vein before now this looked completely doomed for Kana for a while but this w is just so good Khan really does ju juggle the kind of tower aggro nicely but not quite enough and you know Kana does end up getting a return kill on showmaker so that's pretty important as well because Gwen is one of the champions that can kind of deal with casting because she's got a lot of true damage on her Q. So even though he's an anti-mage, it doesn't really matter. Now we see at 12 minutes and only just getting this dragon. Now this is way slower than what it should have been. It should have been way before. They had a slow push building up in bot lane and they also had uh, an increase in smite amount. So... so we shall see what happens here. But overall, this is a pretty convincing game uh, out of T1 so far. They're playing it very, very well. Vayne's picked up a shield bow now as well, which usually you go um, for Berserkers first. But, oh, nice W back from Faker to dodge the ult damage from Showmaker. But he doesn't re-engage. So really nice prediction there. He would have had to like kind of predict when he was going to do it before he did it and to get out but Wanna really really wants to kill on Showmaker or just to uh, cancel his reset to be honest because now he's going to actually lose this uh, tower at uh, this cannon to the tower unless he decides to TP in bot lane which maybe he'll do okay so we see him TPing into bot lane they can dive him here okay Wanna missed his W that's so sad to see if he would have hit that then it would have would have actually been a kill now Ziggs completely missed his ult. It's very hard to hit Viego due to the fact that he has that dash on his W. Olaf is just completely running Teddy down though. What was he doing in that position? That's so bad. Like, they do manage to kill and Faker gets a kill, but Teddy completely out of position there. Kana does use his TP to come down and they try and catch Beryl, but it's not enough. But Kana is behind. This could turn into a, to a, into a pincer for DK, but it's not going to happen. Faker does get locked down and 
Oh, he does go down. It's so sad to see what's going on. Oh, and one is still chasing. I mean, he gets the kill, but it's super, super greedy. So they, they're just going to keep chasing Kana down. I mean... He is going to die here. Maybe he tries to get some return damage, but it's just not enough. And they managed to kill Trundle. Kana gets a kill on Showmaker, though. That makes it so worth. Does he kill Beryl, too? I don't think so. Olaf manages to tag him with a slow. Oh, God. Really unfortunate. And he stays inside his own when he doesn't. But Faker in this top is just... Faker's something else, man. So, I mean, it, that was a very, very messy fight. It was spread out across the entire map, but that does actually even the gold difference. And um, pretty much T1 with about a 1k gold advantage and a dragon, to be fair. So, this early game looking way better. And one of the biggest things here is it's kind of like a, a case of you do have this great early game um, kind of... So... so Okay, so the so I was saying that kind of you have um, this ability where if you have a good early game, that ward is completely invisible. Completely invisible. Where if you have a good early game, you can transition that very heavily into the mid to late. And when you have a vein in the bot lane, having a good early game is very, very important. So even though this does seem very, very messy, I mean, Khan decided to go on the support instead of the jungler and then we can see up in this top can is going nuts on the bottom but faker does tp in and he has so much damage with that penetration spike that he just does a massive amount canna does unfortunately die but then faker gets the kill in top lane as well now faker has double pen now out of his oh canna instantly caught as he tries to walk through the jungle really really rough so this is one thing that dk are good at they're just good at shutting down one player so I mean, I really, you know, I, I don't mind um, the Gwen getting Oblivion Orb here because she can actually um, proc it quite easy on everybody, especially with her ultimate, and it allows LeBlanc to just keep itemizing into her damage, which Faker right now has picked up a needlessly large rod, which means he's potentially thinking of going Rabadon's second item, which means that he is going to be kind of weaker um, for the time being in comparison, but... The casting's going to scale anyway, and he's two deaths, so, you know, it, it's 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 an ability to get a very early game spike. Now, he does have a Dark Seal, but again, I still have yet to see any pros picking up Medjai's, which, to me, is crazy, because it's just such a broken item that it's just so powerful. But... Again, so Canyon, even though he had a little bit of a poor early game, really doing his best to bring it back now. And now he's at an extremely powerful point. He's level 11 now, so he's got that second point in his ultimate ability. So he's going to be looking to be aggressive now. These early dragons are very hard to secure against a Olaf due to the fact that he has uh, he has his true damage E, which again, you can stack with your smite. And it means that you outsmite literally everybody if you do it right. T1 looking to just give over the dragon here. I think this is a massive mistake. Like, that's a mountain dragon. It's super important that they get that. They're not going to be able to chase the Cassidy now. And it's, I, I feel like that was kind of grief. They are going to use the Herald to just pop this tier 2 in mid open though. And that's going to give them massive advantage in terms of uh, being able to shut the Ziggs out. Because now Ziggs can't safely farm mid lane. Which means he can't really make that rotation. And he needs to stay bot lane. Which again stops him from having that ultimate ability to use on kind of the side lanes and inside the jungle in order to do massive damage. So, so Khan is again on the split push game. Now, this is one of the big advan the big things to Camille. Is the fact that her side lane pressure is unmatched. She has some bad matchups in the side lane. Obviously, things like Nasus can do a lot. Trindamir is a very good side lane champion for her. Gangplank, in a way, is because he can clear the wave super fast with barrels and then rotate into team fights. 
and then he's stronger in the team fights as well so she does have quite a lot of rough kind of side lane matchups but um overall I, I think darius can beat her as well actually but overall camille is this massive side lane threat and we're gonna see that a lot more this game we saw that in the first game as well but oh carrier just walks in for no reason like that was so grief like why are you walking up to get vision solo as a support like it makes no sense Faker, Faker, Playmaker. Okay. Okay, so they did defend the tower for a bit, but I'm not sure it was entirely worth the TP out of Kana. He could have just walked back into the lane, so... They were always gonna lose a tower and here like there's just no excuse for this like why is carrier trying to get vision solo he does manage to get some wards down don't get me wrong but it's just so grief to even attempt to do that it's actually crazy so olaf is huge though and canyon again proving why he is one of the best junglers in the world like the fact that he's always ahead and that's the thing canyon is always ahead no matter what he's just gonna sit in this bush on the control ward potentially look to just dive onto Kana. The, we get the tp coming in from cassidy and they're just looking to push this tower down as quick as they can and just try and kind of make up some um some sizable gold difference canyon is actually sat here waiting for faker and he's just gonna okay never mind faker completely expected it So it does use quite a lot of mana, but is Showmaker going to drop here? Faker does have ultimate available for a second distortion, but he doesn't decide to use it. Olaf is just going to run down Kana, though. That is so much damage, and unfortunately, Faker dies to the Olaf, too. Canyon is just way too big, and that's going to be the Baron 40k. Now, this is so sad because the vein is scaling so nice, and all they need to do is wait for her to get this wit's end, and then they could potentially win. Faker is invested into the double needlessly to go into that Rabadon's like we previously discussed so this kind of means that they, they just need to wait like faker's gonna get a, another um spike off this from the massive amount of ap he's gonna get on top of i mean why is wanda trying just going to secure the dragon now they're gonna get dragon as well as baron so he didn't even get vision control of that bottom side of the map luckily Vayne did but she's not gonna be able to do things on her own teddy has been performing so well in this series so far though so one of the main things that uh, we're looking out for now is Faker finishing this Rabadons, which is also going to give him 5 magic pen. We do get to see Pro View of Canyon here. Very, very controlled and he's just waiting and now he gets the flank off, instantly kills Kana. Just completely ruins her and then he gets Faker as well with another Q. So he does get a double. I mean, I would like to see them go over to someone like Showmaker, but it's okay that it does go to Canyon. I mean, he's an early game champion and he's snowball and now he is snowballing very, very hard. So... We see Wanda try and contest this for no reason. It was just so bad. Like, you shouldn't contest that. So, again, so Vayne does pick up her wits end there. Faker still isn't on his Rabadons. He did lose his Dark Seal stack, so. I would have liked to see him just get rid of the Corrupting Pot and get it, but... Uh, especially considering he doesn't even have uh, time warp tonic so we see them going for this right now and this could potentially turn into a fight now you can dance with dragon way easier than baron because you don't lose your stats from taking it but kind of gets massively poked down and has to just e over the wall and now you know she's really not in a position where she can fight which means that this dragon just goes over to dk now t1 can't even contest it it's it's so sad they have everything they need and they're just not using it. Okay, so a uh, good engage from Beryl, but Teddy is just going nuts on Canyon right now and can't TP's in, but Teddy is just being so aggressive. 
Oh, he does have to flash away from the Zigzob, but he's just going to heal up off. Uh, oh, there's nothing to heal up off, actually. So they're just going to have to give this tier 1 tower over. Pretty sad fight in general. I mean, like, Teddy did a lot there on the vein, but it just wasn't enough. I do think he's going for a... Um, I mean, he could actually go uh, Runins this game as well, since they're so short range. Especially the ones that are going to be jumping on him. He's looking to pick up the Ginsu though. This is going to be very impactful. It makes Wits End even stronger as well since it increases on hits. So that's very good. Faker is must be very, very close to his Rabadons right now. And this is one of the things. Faker had a very, very good early game. But because he decided to go into Rabadons, he needs to play like he's building Rabadons. Because at this point of the game now, it's kind of like he's already given away his lead. And he's going to get this Rabadons, which is going to be a massive spike on this base. But... He might have given away a little bit too much in the process of buying this item. And this is why a lot of people don't really buy this item. Because it's very good when you finish it. But it's extremely expensive. And the build path is just terrible in terms of uh, the value that you get out. Like two, two needlessly large is, you know, you just don't get anything additional from that. And they're the same price as, um, let's say, something like an alternator. like Which does a lot more damage due to the fact that it does more burst when it's passive. So... Either way, Cam pretty strong. Teddy is level 14, which is an ADC that's very, very impressive since ADCs usually get a massive re like reduction in terms of XP, not only because they're sharing the XP with somebody, but they're also getting 20% less XP just for being in a dual lane. So we do see Canyon at the top of the charts with his gold, but Teddy is straight behind. So, I mean, if Teddy manages to get his Ginzus now, and then something like a PD or Runins. He's actually going to do so much. And he's going to shred this front line. He's going to completely ruin Canyon. The thing is, Canyon has gone in this into this force of nature. Because Faker is very, very strong right now. And they have double AP solo laners. But the fact that he's gone into force of nature. The HP, you know, it, it's nice. But it's not going to save him from this vein. <clears throat> and this is kind of one of the things with vein is. If you want to try and counter true damage. Because it goes through all resistances, what you do is you build more HP. Now, if you want to count a percentage max HP, because it's based on your maximum HP, you build resistances. Now, the problem is LeBong's W is true damage and it's percentage max HP. So, it's kind of a case of if she can survive in a fight for long enough, she will 1v5 if she has her items. So, we do see Teddy getting closer and he's going to get a nice 600 gold off this tower as well. Basically, split push Vayne at this point. So he gets his tower and now he is just going to back away. <clears throat> but overall, so this is the fight that went on with Wana and Ghost in the jungle. So Wana does manage to catch the Ziggs, but I mean, he does jump away, but it's not enough against the Viego. Viego is hyper mobile and he was running along his shadow too. Beryl instantly meets uh, carrier and just get completely mutilated in that kind of side so So in terms of the overall game state, to be honest, even though DK have a gold advantage, I think that T1 are actually in a winning position right now. Faker has a ridiculously expensive item, so we can do a lot of bursts, which is going to allow the Vayne to actually clean up as well. On top of that, he is going into his Void Staff now, which is going to give him that triple magic pen spike. Um, and also, uh, he's going to get the Void Staff reduction as well. So, very, very strong. Sorry, double magic pen spike. Uh, I guess Luden's kind of counts because it's 6 magic pen, but... But yeah, you've got the 16 from his 3 items on top of the 18 from his boots. Grand total of 34 magic pen, which is more than base stats. So, unless they've built magic, resist, then they'll get shredded, which if we look at the Ziggs right now, he has no magic resist. If we look at the... Uh, actually, no, everybody else does. So, Ziggs is going to just completely get shredded. But also, it reduces just magic resist in general too. So, 
T1 just trying to rush this. I mean, they do have a vein, and I think she has a Ginzies as well. So they can actually rush this. You can see them stacks just procking up on her, though. So very, very risky. Faker does get caught by Khan. The Camille all into the Zigzol is so difficult to deal with. But we are going to see Teddy just run them down now. He has popped his ultimate, and Teddy is literally going to pop off. <clears throat> so here... Oh, he walks way too close. Like, what is this positioning? What is the positioning from Teddy, though? Why is he why, why is he staying within melee range of a Leona when she's Zonya? Like, what? Terrible, man. And now DK get the Baron and this huge advantage that T1 have got just from the draft has just been completely negated. Faker getting caught in the side lane, like why? Like how does that even happen? They had a ward to see that the Camille was on her way, so <clears throat> crazy. Here and as we can see, watch Teddy. Why is he standing on top of a Leona there? He gets instantly stunned, and then it's, it's just very, very rough. Like, I just don't get it. That was terrible. They're very nervous in there, aren't they? Their entire career is on the line. But again, we have this top. I mean, Khan's really showing up. I mean, if Khan gets resources, he can do so well. Okay, so manages to get the tower using that satchel charge to basically just execute it. Faker jumps in, tries to get that. Oh my god, he literally procked his mark on Ghost there and he instantly halved him. That was double Q as well. So that's not even LeBlanc's highest damage kind of rotation. It's her quickest rotation though. Shunmaker is pushing on mid. Again, they're, they're fighting two Baron buff waves. Like. Teddy is trying to chase Showmaker, but Teddy wants blood. Look at him. He is building a uh, maybe that's a bulk. Don't know. It'll either be bulk or bloodthirster. Since it's this late into the build, I would say probably bloodthirster, since it's very um, it's very difficult to build bulk this late because of the amount of components it has. Uh, but that makes it much better to build in the early game. Um, now, Bloodthirster is uh, has a lot of very expensive large components like the BF Sword, so we'll probably see him just sit on this Vampiric for a little bit just so that he can keep wards, and then he will um, end up turning that into Bloodthirster when he's got the full amount of gold for it. So that's probably what we'll see, to be honest, uh, out of Teddy. But overall, this is a insanely close game, like considering everything, to be honest. I mean very very close so this could potentially go to anyone now we can see that in the side of DK they have a 7,000 gold lead and they do have two very very fed members in the Olaf and the Camille but all we have to think of is if Vayne gets those uh, shutdowns and that's gonna be huge kind of uses stopwatch to delay some time but it really doesn't matter when you're playing into a casting and it'll instantly all on top of you so very very bad pick there from um, Kana and now they're going to just push this down even further. Teddy is on a mission. He's literally like... Holy. Teddy is on one and we see the 700... Uh, oh, sorry, the 1000 gold go over to him. So this is actually going to allow him to just pick up his, his uh, BF sword now. Um, at least, I, I don't think it gives him enough to get Bloodthirster straight up, but we will probably see a BF sword out of him as soon as he clears this away. Maybe he's just going to stay on the map, though, considering they've just got this uh, pressure. Ooh, he doesn't have Ultimate available anymore, so we can't really impact this fight anywhere near as much as he did before. The fact that they got core here is so sad. Teddy is being completely griefed by this team, honestly. Kana is kind of running it. Um, 
considering oh okay oh okay so faker dies as well trying to kill ghost off it's so sad to see dk with a dominating performance though i mean t1 have the comp to win here but canna's just inted way too hard like way too hard and now this is where they just end the game out so i mean teddy played out of his mind this game like actually out of his mind but it just wasn't enough uh so many mistakes in this game by both teams to be honest but that's uh that was game two so let's go on to game three now so currently it's two zero two damn one i don't know the overall result of this game but let's use this time just to quickly fill out um Oh, wait. Oh, wait. My bad. Let me just quickly fill out my uh, form. So, against T1. Uh, so, let me just quickly do this. Do, 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 do. Oh, wait. Why am I doing that? So, so in the first game we had, uh, so DK had Camille. I think they need to ban the Camille way to be honest. Uh, Camille, Trundle, Rise, Ash, and Braum. For the side of T1, they had Gwen, Diego, Azir. Israel and Leona. Um, game two. I mean, game one. I mean, in terms of overall performance, I mean, it was literally just Camille Trundle going nuts, right? Like, Camille and Trunnel just completely popped off this game. So, I think Camille here actually gets uh, blue, even though even though Trunnel did do a lot. But Camille did such a good job of actually just carrying that lead and pushing it as hard as he could. So, it was really, really good to see. And everybody else got green as well. Like, And in terms of who inted on the side of um, T1, I really think... I never thought I'd have to do this, but I'm actually going to have to give Faker... Uh, actually, no, Faker had some huge ults. Even though that first kill was kind of create like kind of, oh, he still did a lot. Gwen, um, I think Gwen really kind of into this game to be honest. Like, if she could have just like relieved that pressure off top lane, then she would have been in a much better position. Leona also kind of into too, um, multiple multiple times. I mean, I'm gonna give Teddy Green. He tried so hard this game. And, you know, Viego did okay, but we'll keep him on the yellow. In terms of this uh, next game, I mean, this was very, very sad for Teddy. Like, he performed so well here. So, for the second game, they had uh, Camille, Ola, which, I mean, Canyon easily gets MVP this game. He completely popped off, and he was the main reason that they won. Um, Ziggs and Leona. So same bot lane as they had game two last. Uh, and then enemy team had Gwen, uh, Viego, LeBlanc, Vayne, and Trundle. So I think in the in this game, I mean, I, th I think all of D DK played well. Um, I think Gwen, again, kind of entered. Uh, like entered really hard actually so as soon as they put this pressure on the top lane it just completely caves i'm gonna give viego orange he just did not compare the jungle difference this game was just too big like i think the only other person that i'm gonna give any change to i think we're gonna put bane on green faker could have had a really good game this one like this could have been really good for faker but he completely griefed by just kind of throwing it off Now we go to game three. Oops, I had to, uh, I forgot to stop recording.